Good morning and welcome back to Insurance 101. Please forgive me, I need to have coffee this morning. Um, and I wanted to just talk to you this morning in regards to something that we call a personal articles floater. So a personal articles floater is basically, it can be a standalone type of policy that you can buy separately, or you can actually have it added on to your homeowner's policy depending on what type of coverage it is, okay? So a personal articles floater would actually cover the following. So if you needed to have coverage for, let's say, jewelry, fine arts and this your fine arts could also include your um excuse me i'm looking at my keurig your fine arts could also include your antique books china crystal um any type of collectibles rugs things of that nature also a lot of people do have furs so that would also be considered to be part of a personal articles floater so that might be something that you would want to have scheduled as well cameras i know my father is a camera fanatic he collects or not even collects but he uses very expensive cameras because for his hobby um, and also his musical instruments which would be his guitars and amplifiers and things of that nature silverware um, some people do collect silver raw coins and even sometimes depending on your wine collection um, and believe it or not certain types of bicycles because i've insured people who actually spin because they're professional bikers they actually spend up to thousands and thousands of dollars on their bicycles so these are the things that you would want to have covered now in reference to this personal article floater how they actually determine the rate for an item it would be a rate per hundred so whatever that rate is going for per hundred that is what they charge you but I got to tell you the coverage is definitely worthwhile due to the fact that it is an all risk coverage coverage and not only is it an all risk coverage um, if it also is worldwide so let's say now here it is you've got your uh, beautiful two carat um which is a you're about to tell what I want my two camera emerald cut diamond ring and now here it is I'm on my honeymoon or I'm on vacation and I'm swimming in the ocean and then all of a sudden a wave hits and I'm like oh oh and then there goes my ring now how in the world do I get paid for that and I want the full amount for that ring so in order to get paid the full amount for that ring I have to schedule that item so I would have that item scheduled and I would pay a rate per hundred and then I would go to my insurance company of course you would have to have an appraisal which you would submit to the insurance company while they're actually insuring this item so I always tell everyone make sure that your appraisals are up to date and what do I mean by up to date if you have an appraisal that's seven years old I'm going to tell you probably you're going to want to have an appraisal dated within the one, last one to three years years to make sure that a because most of the time jewelry does not depreciate in value it only appreciates depending on unless you have costume jewelry but that's a different story for a different segment and there's nothing wrong with costume jewelry you know but it's just one of those things when we're talking about this type of policy that's not going to cover it however i won't even say that let's say that you decided that you have all smaller pieces of jewelry so let's say you've got a ring that might have cost you a thousand dollars here and then a necklace that cost you not so much but 500 some earrings six hundred dollars here seven hundred dollars here whatever the prices may be now there is something that we call blanket jewelry coverage okay so it means that you would not have to itemize or list the items However, it does give you a cap per hundred. So I'll try and give you an example of that or what, um, clarify that just a little bit more. So blanket coverage basically provides you with an overall limit. So if your overall limit is a hundred thousand, okay, hundred thousand dollars, and let's say that everything out of your house gets stolen. Now the blanket, it's a cap per item limit so the most that you can collect on that one item is going to be you know whatever that cap is set whether it be five thousand a thousand whatever it is that you have a cap per item so you just want to be careful about um i want to say blanket jewelry coverage i say 
you know, when you have certain pieces, you want to basically definitely itemize those pieces so you get the value that um, you basically paid for. So I will, um, and then also when you have, um, when you have uh, personal articles floater, they also do have something called vault coverage and in vault coverage and out of vault coverage. So if you're the type of person that you know that you um, have these particular items and you keep them in the vault at a bank due to the fact that you are a little scared of maybe they might get stolen out of my home or if they my, so my home does get broken into, I don't want these particular items to ever leave. And so I schedule them or I have them in vault. That is actually a different jewelry. That gave you a different jewelry rate because they will actually give you a credit for them being in vault so you might want to think about that but then when you get ready to say let's wear that jewelry item um, you will have to call your insurance company and let them know that you are taking that item out of vault they'll ask you what day is it coming out of vault what day is it going back into vault so the date that you actually put it back into vault they will actually go ahead and reschedule they'll go ahead and put that back and some insurance companies allow you to take these vaulted items out of vault up to three to four times a year for free and you don't even have to pay um, for that so in reference to um, scheduling items like I tell um, I, I'll just give you an example I had one client she decided that she wanted to take a brooch out of um, out of vault to get it made into a necklace and she had called it La Pen. So she took this brooch out and I said to her, while it's in the care, custody, and control of the dealer, let me schedule this item. So when I say schedule, now I take it out of vault coverage and I actually itemize it on that policy for how much ever that particular item costs. And I think that was probably about a, over $150,000 for that particular brooch. So now she argues with me, tells me she doesn't want it scheduled. She's not going to a rinky-dink jeweler. The uh, jeweler that she's going to is Harry Winston, the jeweler to the stars. And at that point, it, I was new in my career. I didn't even know who Harry Winston was. Now I know, again, if Harry, you listening, I'll take that jewelry. Um, but anyway, so I didn't know who Harry Winston was. And then, of course, I said, well, you know, in the event that he doesn't have enough coverage, because, again, like I always tell people, you don't buy insurance for others. You buy insurance for yourself. Your insurance is to protect your assets, your things. So in the event that someone else cannot protect your assets or your things, even if they're found at fault, you need to have the right coverage to protect you. So... Long story short, she calls me back probably approximately a week later. She's telling me how distraught she is. Um, and, um, and I had to tell her, don't be distraught because it's not covered due to the fact that she would not let me now schedule the item because he lost over $50,000 worth of stones um, to her item. So um, this is why I do tell my insureds to make sure that when you um, get these coverages, never rely on someone else's insurance policy, always rely on yours. So if you need help, with any type of insurance questions whatsoever and you find that my videos are helpful please feel free to go ahead and like this video don't forget to subscribe also to this station and then hit that little bell for notifications and then you'll know exactly when I upload a new video and then what I want you to do is if you have any questions just leave it in the comment section I will definitely get back to you I still have to answer the young lady's question in regards to the roof um, and so I will do that on another video. I'll actually try and do that um, before I leave this morning um, in reference to some claims questions, I guess. Um, but again, like I said, I always want you to check with your local brokers. I want you to check with your um, person that you actually do your insurance with. Just ask them these questions. Again, these are just the things that I come across being a broker for the last 14 to 15 years in the state of New York. But again, make sure that you follow this your state's rules and regulations. So if you have any questions, please feel free to drop me a line. And again, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that little bell. Have a great day.